Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ray Marquina, aka the official Arcaneer. I got another nice short video for you today. Today, we're going to be connecting to a view from a SQL endpoint using a notebook in Microsoft Fabric. We're going to start by using the traditional method that I would normally use, and that is by using a JDBC connector. But the reason I'm making this video is really to showcase the new Spark connector, which is really going to make the process way easier. Now, you might think it's pretty straightforward to connect to a view, but when working with lake houses, you're not going to be able to see the SQL endpoint objects. This might make things a bit confusing when you're trying to query views directly from a notebook. So in this video, I'm going to break it all down for you to show you exactly how to get things working the easy way. So with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right on in. All right, so in front of you, I have the lake house that I have created with some uh, customer information and order information. And what I've done is if I switch over to my SQL endpoint is I've taken this data, this normalized data, and I've enriched it by uh, combining it together, or I've taken normalized data and denormalized it. So you can see that I now have a customer profile, which combines the customer information with the address information and the orders, which combines the details and the headers together. So now I have uh, what we'll call denormalized data. Now, if I go back to my workspace and I bring open a notebook, what I want to do is I want to see what happens if I try to call one of these views. So I'm going to attach my lake house. And right off the bat, we're going to see that we don't even see the views available to us to even query. So again, we see um, things like our customer denormalized uh, view of this, and we should be able to query that just fine. But let me go back here and let me uh, run a SQL query so that we can extract the the view name. If I go back to the notebook, and again, I try to do the same thing for the view, we'll see a, a different result. So again, it works just fine for the customer. And because that is because the uh, lake house is displaying those delta tables. But again, this isn't going to work the same way when we create an object within a SQL endpoint. It's because our lake house isn't going to uh, provide us view into the um, objects within that lake house. Now, the way that I do it is by creating a JDBC connector. I should say the way that I used to do it. And in order for us to do this, it does take quite a little bit of a setup. So let's go ahead and start that. We're going to need to set up a token, a connection string, a JDBC URL that kind of pieces things together. We're going to need to establish a driver as well as some um, uh, connection string property, <clears throat> which is going to be the, uh, the JSON needed uh, that we pass into our uh, JDBC read. All right, so for our token, I like to use the msparkutils.credentials.getToken. Um, and we pass in uh, Power BI or PBI into that. Our connection string, we can get that by navigating back to our lake house, clicking on the settings and copying that value. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. For our JDBC URL, this might have to be looked up, but I can tell you what I have for mine. So I have F, and we're going to use JDBC SQL Server colon forward slash forward slash and we can pass in our connection string and we can close it with a colon and the port number that's going to be used for our driver this is going to be com dot microsoft dot sql server dot jdbc dot sql server driver and SQL, the, the second S is going to be capitalized, and the L will also be capitalized, so SQL Server Driver. And for our properties, we need to pass in our access token. Let me go ahead and pass in the token, and we are going to need to pass in the driver. So let me go ahead and add that. 
All right, so let me make sure that everything looks okay here. We have our JDBC SQL Server connection string with our port. We have com Microsoft SQL Server, JDBC SQL Server driver, as well as our connection string. So now what we need to set up is the query that we want to um, use to pull back the information that we're looking for. So in this case, it's just going to be a select all from the view name. So let me go ahead and paste that in. And now we, we should be able to read this information. So we can use the spark.read. And we can use the JDBC property here. And we can pass in our URL. We'll say we can pass in our table, which is going to be the query that we just wrote. And then we can pass in our properties, which will be our uh, CS prop variable here. So that one I can just populate now. That one's the easiest. It doesn't require any um, any F string or any variables to be passed. It can just be passed in directly. So for our URL, this is going to be our JDBC URL. And then it's going to be followed by a um, semicolon and our database name. And that's going to be equal to uh, the name that we have for our database. Oh, I didn't actually set one up for our database. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say DB name. And let's call this Bronze Lake House or Bronze LH as it's the name of what my database is here. And then we can pass in the DB name. All right, we're going to need to pass in our query. Now this does take it in kind of like a subquery format. So we are going to need to um, wrap it around uh, parentheses and also alias it. So we can pass in our query now. And we could do it within the um, within this parameter itself. I just find it easier to just showcase the, uh, the SQL in kind of a clean fashion. And that should be everything we need in order to display our data frame. Well, let's go ahead and run this and see if this works. Oh, let me write, uh, if I could spell display correctly. And we can run this now. And from here, now we should be able to see that now we're able to pull back the information that we're looking for using the, um, using the SQL endpoints. Again, this is quite cumbersome in order for us to be able to pull this information, right? You saw that it took quite a bit of coding and I had to get the names exactly right, the URLs exactly right. Uh, it could be a little bit difficult and maybe a little bit daunting for people who just wanna be able to read the view. So now that we've looked at how to do it the hard way, I'm really excited to talk about the Spark connector that Fabric has released. So I'm gonna go over to the uh, documentation where we can find this. So you can see that we um, look for the data engineering's topic and we have the new Spark data warehouse connector. This is similar for those of you who worked with the Spark connector within Synapse uh, in, in order to be able to read from your dedicated pool. They've come out with something very similar um, for the warehouse as well as lake house. So we take a look at this. I, I do encourage you to look at the documentation so that you see how it takes in the three-part naming convention. And it even shows you a little bit further down how you can write back to your warehouse. Um, so for starters, I'm gonna first take the import libraries here and I'm gonna run this. Then we can go through and, and look at the documentation some more. So here you can give, uh, they give a good representation of some code that we can follow. You can see that they have a data frame and it uses the Synapse SQL uh, property here. And it's going to take in the lake house or warehouse name, the schema and the table and or view. So let's go ahead and copy that and let's go ahead and see how it works. So I'm going to say DF1. So we have uh, something different than what we've already displayed. Let's go ahead and pass in our bronze lake house name this is going to go directly against the dbo schema and the table is going to be our view customer profile so let me go ahead and copy that name there and let's go ahead and display display our data frame df1 let's go ahead and run this 
And so what used to take, right, what took us roughly about, you know, five minutes to create, we can now do within a couple of seconds. So hats off to Microsoft for providing this feature. I feel that this is a game changer when it comes to streamlining code and our development process. And that's going to do it for today's video. Now you know how to connect to a view using a SQL endpoint using both the JDBC connector and the new Spark connector, which makes things way easier. If you found this video helpful, drop a like and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Also, if you're working with Microsoft Fabric, be sure to subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.